The views expressed on the Nerd Realm are not necessarily the views of the Lagoon Out Network or its advertisers. Listener discretion is advised. Do not try this at home. We are trained professionals. the nerd realm everybody i'm your host havoc and welcome to the nerd realm this is the only podcast that's still popular on the run uh, and allow me to introduce our our brand new co-host all the way from revolver games give it up for mythic well that's our other guest <laughs> as, as, as the camera jumped to uh uh, our other guest tonight is from the Lagging Out Network, the brainchild himself, Chieftain. Yay! Oh, man. Oh, Thank guys. You for me, oh, hey. That third seat's always available. Just say. Just call Ed and we'll, we'll serve you some, some, some chips. You know, it's always in the green room. And some queso. <laughs> some queso. <laughs> Why's it got to be queso? Everyone likes cheese. <laughs> That's true. That's true. America runs on Dunkin' and cheese. Oh, man, guys. It's been, you know, it, it's been a really hell of a week. Uh, like, like, we recently lost a, a, a titan in the video game industry, uh, which I guess is debatable, at least on the titan status, but let's just say he's the most influential in the gaming industry. We just lost uh, Nintendo president Satoru Iwata. Uh, he, he passed away at the age. He passed away at the age of 55 due to a bile duct, uh, a bile duct growth, which he was dealing with for the past several years. I mean, <clears throat> the guy took over. Uh, he he took over Nintendo's reins back in 2002. Saw through through at least two of the most successful handhelds Nintendo has had, uh, the, the Nintendo DS and the Wii. I mean, his presence has been felt through the entire gaming community, uh, from from all the way from from Bungie to to EA, to, to, to several people across have, have sent numerous tributes to him via Twitter, via Facebook, any social media in general. It's like you could I mean, get how, on social media like, without it. Yeah. Exactly. I, I mean, how did you guys take the passing news? Oh, I didn't like it at all, man. That made me sad. He was a big part of my childhood. I mean, Mario, uh, that was it, man. I was a child playing Super Mario on the you know, on the Nintendo 64 and the Super Nintendo. It was great. What about you, Chieftain? I, I'm i just, I'm kind of, I was kind of shocked when I had the news, uh, heard the news, I should say, and I, I, again, it was like part of my childhood young uh, man stage, I guess, for lack of a better term. But, uh, yeah, it, it was... I was kind of shocked by the whole thing, and like the rest of the community, I was kind of shocked, and... You know, Nintendo will real uh, reap from this. Not reap from it, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, everyone's mourning them, like, mourning the passing. I guess that was as coherent as I could be. <laughs> No, that's completely understandable. I, I, I do understand where you're going with it. Uh, pretty much a lot of eyes are going to be on Nintendo on how they they, they move forward. I mean, because Iwata actually did something no Nintendo president has ever done. Uh, Nintendo was, was notorious for being completely secretive. You didn't know what was going behind those doors, unlike any other developer out there. Uh, but Iwata was the first ever Nintendo president to let... To, to let people of the industry uh, to kind of peer into what's going on, what's going on in the back uh, through uh, through the uh, Nintendo uh, Directs, through the Iwata Asks. I mean, those those were staples, and like an hopefully they keep doing the, the exactly. And you know, like, I really hope they keep doing the Nintendo Directs because of the fact that. That that, that that was catered to the Nintendo fans, and and 
hopefully they keep doing it. Maybe with Miyamoto or maybe with with uh, with Reggie Filame. Hopefully that they keep doing that because they were really really fun. Uh, I think I watched every last one of them since joining Lagging Out Network. And so, I mean, they were really enjoyable. It's definitely going to be a, a, a hard move on seeing someone replace Iwata. Uh, right now, who's running the comp right now is Sajiro Miyamoto and Ginyo Takata. Right now, they're, they're running day-to-day -day operations until Nintendo Japan appoints a new president. You could tell and that was the tell Chief and see running the board. <laughs> yes, it's the gong of silence. <laughs> oh man, crickets everyone. I got, got cricketed <laughs> on my own show. Go figure. <laughs> oh, it's on the show. Wow. Yeah, on my show I got cricketed. Go figure. <laughs> uh. But Let's move on to, to the reason why everyone's signing on to, to watch this show on YouTube. Uh, the San Diego Comic-Con 2015 Games and Movie and TV Blowout. Uh, let's go. Uh, I believe Mythic has some great news as far as, uh, as, as Black Ops 3. Is that I do. Uh, zombies. They're bringing it back to the roots. Uh, they did a big thing at Comic Con with zombies. People come in and uh, play it. Uh, they showed trailers of it. Um, and basically, what they're doing is they're going back to the roots when it comes to zombies, and that's what everyone wanted. So it's it's nice to see them actually listen and uh, definitely go back to the roots. So I'm excited about that. Did y'all? Did any of y'all play zombies? I don't know. I know I did. I enjoyed it. I played zombies on. I think it was. I think it was Black Ops Two. Uh, my favorite map. It was the. No wait, not Black Ops Two. It was. Oh God, which one was? It? I think it was the first Black Ops. It's the one that had uh, the four horror movie icons. It was like it was Sarah Michelle Gellar, Robert England, Danny Trio, and Black Ops I forgot who the other one was. Uh, Michael Rooker. I, I mean, that was the last real zombies map I really played, except for except for Exo Zombies on Advanced Warfare. But, I'm just I mean, Black Ops 2, Keener de but, Toten. Uh, the best. The best. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say I was a fan of zombies. I just, I didn't enjoy, I don't enjoy it. I, just, I can understand the appeal and everybody loves it. I know our friend from XL Gaming, Bella, she she's actually has like all the, uh, the little sodas, like the Juggernog and yeah, every yeah. custom soda ever made. Uh, that, for the thing, and it's like I, I just can I don't know why I just don't like shooting AI in that particular atmosphere. I don't know, maybe because it like stressed me out so much, and everybody was so <laughs> far ahead of me. Like, oh, let's go! It was cheap, then let's go play zombies. And I'm like, oh, okay, because everyone has their way of playing, you know. Everyone oh, has yeah. their strategies. So I don't know what the hell is going on because like I get pulled in because they need a third person. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'll play. I like the aliens in the last in Ghosts better, but that's just my preference. But um, okay, yeah, I know yeah. this isn't in the notes, but I know with the new Black Ops Three, uh, we can talk about that. They have the Call of Duty Endowment Fund. You guys hear about that? I have not. The nomination process. Uh, they're trying to get veterans, twenty-five thousand veterans jobs. Uh, and through the Call of Duty Endowment Fund. If you want to check it out, you can go to Call of Duty Endowment on Facebook. But it, it's, a, it's a very good thing that Treyarch is doing um, with Call of Duty and veterans coming back from foreign wars. It's a really good, positive thing that marriages video games and helping our troops, which is really cool. Um, guys, check it out. It's uh, Again, it's called Call of Duty Endowment. It's on the Facebook page called Call of Duty Endowment. Very nice, very nice. Um, also, uh, I, mean, I mean, my thing. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I was just, I was just gonna talk about that. Uh, even with the, there's the Black Ops Three Juggernaut Edition that comes with a, I think it's about one ninety nine. Uh, comes with a assortment of things that you know your season pass. Also, it comes with a Juggernaut cooler, like a, a mini fridge, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting it. I get the game with the with the season pass, and I'm good to go. Is a mini fridge? Yeah, it's a mini fridge shaped like uh, the Juggernaut, so uh, like uh, from uh, the zombies. <laughs> okay, you know what? 
I'm all for collector's editions, but damn, when we start giving away appliances, I think it's time <laughs> to start scaling back. Pretty soon, the lagging out video game is going to have a lagging out toaster, and then the Nerd Realm expansion pack is going to come with a bath mat. So, I mean, pretty we're soon you'll be able to furnish your home. We're giving bread makers out. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> bread maker. The Revolver bread Games ma bread maker. <laughs> bread maker and rice makers. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, moving on, I guess. Uh, Batman. Uh, the August DLC is coming out, and it's going to have. Uh, we're uh, it's bringing back the '89 movie. It's going to have the Batmobile from the from the '89 movie and the suit, along with um, I think Nightwing. <laughs> Uh, Nightwing, uh, the 1990s uh, Catwoman outfit. Uh, the, Michelle, the Michelle Pfeiffer one. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, I, I think, and the Robin, another Robin uh, outfit. With the nipples? The costume was with the nipples? Oh, uh, the one. Uh, no, 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 not the. Oh, why can't we get the Schumacher, man? <laughs> <laughs> we need bat nipples. <laughs> <laughs> need bat nipples in this game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, the first thing I thought of when Arkham Knight dropped is like, we need more nipples. Makes so. sense. Also, uh, the Batgirl DLC uh, came out on the 15th. Yes. So people, that one's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, like it's not very often you get to play a Batgirl and Robin team up. Very true. And uh, have you played the Batman? Uh, uh, what was your thing? Have you played the DLC? I've not played the DLC because I'm still playing the main game. In order to get the tr the so-called <laughs> true ending, they're forcing you to, to find all the Riddler trophies, do all this other stuff. And I'm sorry. Forcing me to go and hunt for those damn things, first of all, is just ridiculous because <laughs> – I'm sorry. Does the Riddler have time to go and hide these things? <laughs> and I mean, it's like, oh, sorry, Two Face. Let me walk in here. Do you mind if I hide a couple of these? And maybe throw up a couple of riddles. Hope you don't mind. It's okay. And I mean, don't get me started on the Batmobile tracks. Don't get me started on that. I was about to add that one, but <laughs> do you want to see if I can make a call to Batman and see if we can get him on? Or because I got his number. Uh, it's oh, you got his you. number. Yeah. See, look at my my bat phone right here. It's black and yellow. So, and maybe that might be something he might have to answer for on the Lagging Out Network, uh, the Lagging Out Podcast. Okay. So there's some right. questions that need to be answered. Um, also, other news: The Fable Legends. They supposedly accidentally released the release date, which will be October 13th. Also, uh, their Xbox and PC are playing together, and there's going to be where you can Xbox players can play with PC players. Oh, what? Cool. Yeah, nice. they released wow. that. And that's gonna be uh, that's the first first time I think that's ever happened. Yeah, if I can, if I can remember, uh, that's well, gonna be amazing. It's gonna be so well, cool. Well, I get like, I know that Microsoft is really pushing toward unifying both Xbox One and Windows Ten to make it just to make it a collaborative uh, video game platform. So I right. mean. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of those with a lot of upcoming games. Yep, Steam and uh, Microsoft, they're going to do it where they can play with, uh, you can play with PC players, you can play with Xbox console Xbox console players. A also, unified community, holy cow. All the DLC is free with Fable Legends. So, anybody, anybody that loves Fable, this is the game right here. Oh my god, I, I love Fable 3. kind of got schoolgirl giddy when they announced it. <laughs> oh, I freaking loved it, dude. I'm like, yes, I love this game. I, I, I like Lions uh, Lionsgate. Is that what it's called? I think it's Lions Head. Lions Head. I can't remember the developer name. I apologize, guys. I don't have my notes in front of me. But uh, yeah, I I just love that stuff. I I'm just I fall in love with the story and everything like that. And it, oh, my inner twelve year old girl that loves Sailor Moon and Fable. Like <laughs> it's just I, it's great. I always play it twice. One as a good guy and then one as a bad guy. I always play the Fable twice. Right. I think that was one of the first games that kind of really, really evolved the whole idea of being the good guy or being the bad guy, and <laughs> actually, exactly, and, you, and having it change your your appearance, how people react to it. Yeah, they kind of tinkered around with it in Star Wars: uh, Knights of the Old Republic, but the, but I think Fable's the first game that really kind of pushed that envelope. I'm really waiting for the new Knights of the Old Republic. I don't. They didn't release it when it's coming out. I don't think yet, but. I'm playing it. I don't care. <laughs> Why don't we just make some phone calls to the developer and see see yeah, if we can get an exclusive? 
Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Start calling them. <laughs> um, next move, Halo 5, the new uh, new game type called Warzone. They just released a new uh, a new map on it, and they released it on uh, <laughs> at Comic Con. And instead of the normal way of releasing maps and gameplay, they didn't show it on the game. What they did is they uh, they made a blocked brick. Uh, Replica, basically, of 90, over 90,000 bricks were, were used to make a replica over 1,000 pounds with LED working lights and everything that they showed at Comic-Con. So that was that was a pretty interesting way of, uh, you know, releasing uh, their new map. as a Bricks? Play. Yeah. What, like bricks? Like real uh, bricks? You know, kind of like uh, Minecraft bricks, I would say. But the oh, okay. Blocks. Well, that's really interesting. Yeah. Everything is Wonder awesome. For the people that don't know what the Warzone is, it's their new game type. It's uh, 24 players, so it's a 12v12. And there's also AI uh, enemies integrated inside uh, the gameplay, the game types. It, it's kind of like marrying like Titanfall with uh, Call of Duty World at War, um, which the game type was called Ground War, where you actually were playing uh, 10 on 10. Yeah, but yeah. then also with Titanfall, you'd be playing... Uh, Six for six v six with AI, so it's kind of like that, and I think that would be a lot of fun. I like playing huge like RPG um, FPS games like that. Yeah, it's, it's massive. Um, they're supposed to be five times as big as any Halo map ever made. Uh, the uh, these maps are going to be wow. So they're massive. So I assume that there's going to be vehicles and stuff too. The vehicles. Um, they're supposed to be. It's supposed to be kind of like a, a domination type game type. Where uh, there's three bases and you have to control the bases for points. Oh, cool! Very nice. So that's it I for smell, the. I smell a revolver gaming uh, nerd realm like an out podcast live stream with that. Easily, <laughs> definitely. I already got mine pre-ordered, so. Oh. So, I gotta get on that. <laughs> uh, straight out of Comic Con, uh, Capcom. Threw out a brand new character, well, not really a brand new character, but a classic character with a whole new bag of tricks uh, for Street Fighter V. Kid Masters has returned to the fighting tournament. Uh, really relying on the light. Uh, well, well, I mean, because he's always been more of the Dragon Punch, uh, uh, Hurricane Kick, but they really, really went overboard with it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, it's going to be a different a different spin to him. He can like 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 launch across the screen and stuff like that. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I'm really excited for Street Fighter. Making him OP is what they're going to do. Ryu and Kid always been OP'd. <laughs> and then two two weeks later, they're going to nerf him. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. I'm just waiting. Personally, I'm just waiting for Guile to get announced. That was my boy. Guile. Mr. America himself. John Claude Van Damme. Okay. <laughs> Wait a second. Why do you like have a Belgian like accent? Guy. I always like the scratchy guy. I forget his that name. Some... That's some... some. Since you brought up the movie, I'm going to go ahead and point out one, one critical <laughs> flaw about the movie. One critical flaw. There's plenty. Trust me, there's plenty. But there's one critical flaw. The scene in question I'm, I'm referring to is when Bison and Guile are talking, and they have all those hostages there. And at the very end of the press conference, he, like, like he tells Charlie, who later becomes Blanca in the movie, "I'm coming for him." I'm like, what? Way to single out a hostage. Way to let's. Oh God, I hate it. How the hell do you remember that movie? No, I haven't seen that movie it. in like 20 years, <laughs> and you're like spinning it off the top of your head like you just watched it before I the show. You are that. amazing havoc, which is why you're the host of your own show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh man, I was about to say the same thing. I was like, how does he remember? <laughs> what the fuck, man? The, the, this guy Third is. I'm gonna stick with you. <laughs> if, if there was a, if there was a, a special Jeopardy that was nerd Jeopardy, and Havoc was there. Like there'd be no way to beat him. There'd I'm be no one to beat him. Now. Except well, it's probably I'm Jason the X from SCNS Live will give you a run for your money. But I think that's the only other person to be able to keep up I'm with a, your. I'll your... best friend to get there. Hands down. <laughs> if that ever happens, I'm helping you. I'm helping you get there. I want to 
That's what Revolver well, needs. Like I, want want to cut. <laughs> I want to cut. <laughs> oh, God. All for, all for $30 in credit at GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> that means oh, you got to turn in seven games. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I won. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, in the TV news of Comic-Con, uh, Stephen Amell, who plays uh, the Arrow, uh, well, obviously on the show on CW called Arrow, uh, he recently came out to promote season four, and he was wearing a brand new costume. He was wearing what would be known as the Green Arrow costume. Uh, it's very similar to how it looks in New 52, and I'm actually kind of excited about it. It disses the, uh, the, the sleeve, so it shows his guns. Yeah. I mean, got him. you work Flex out that hard to, to be, you know, to be a superhero character. You want to show your guns, is all I'm saying. I know I would. I was like, I would go shirtless if I could, you know. Screw armor. Means that. Look at me. Mm. I'd be so afraid to do that, and then like, like running in slow motion on a beach, so every like <laughs> fat on my body is just like. Woo, woo. Yeah, they call me the fat. Like Baywatch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they call me the fat David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Uh, oh god! <laughs> oh, that's just about this season. Not want. I think it's gonna be great. Yeah, uh, they're bringing in uh, Neil McDonald. Uh, sorry, uh, Neil McDonough. Uh, Donahue. I'll get it right eventually. <laughs> as as uh, Damien Dark, uh, he's the head of Hive. There goes our uh, chance of ever getting him on the show. To, uh, well, maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's funny, though, because he was also in a few uh, Marvel Studio productions. Uh, he was Dum Dum Dugan in uh, Captain America, uh, the first Avenger, a couple episodes. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, a couple episodes of, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., as well as Agent Carter. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting seeing him popping up in a DC property because, do he, like, like he, he adapts to any character he plays. I mean, because for Dum Dum Dugan, he put on weight and then. Another role he was in, he was just skinny on the, like, and gray-haired. I'm like, stop! You freaking, you freaking chameleon! Does he wear? Does he have like a beard and carry a two by four and go ho? <laughs> oh, that would be great. <laughs> oh, that tax oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Duggan. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's Jim Duggan. Yeah. I think he's alive, isn't he? <laughs> no. I think he, I actually think he's dead. He's like, let's play dead or alive. I saw Jim Duggan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let me. I know Tess is dead. Suicide. Yeah, rest in yeah. peace, Ted. Rest in peace. <laughs> this one's for me, and I'm pouring steroids for my homie. <laughs> so, guys, where do you think you guys are going to see this season go? I mean, because Hive was mentioned for the past couple of seasons. Uh, they're also responsible for killing Diggle's brother. Spoiler alert. Uh, I think everyone knows I mean, that well, hopefully. But I mean, where do we see this season true. going? I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, because where is that? I mean, because we're we're talking about the people and the person who gave Raz Al Ghul a run for his money. I mean, so that should say something. Um, answer me this: Is Hive the Hive the same one as the Teen Titans Hive? Is that the one you're referring to, or Similar, to get yes. my AFK? Yes. But yeah, so they they would have like Jinx and everybody like that. See, the best thing is, I don't know who all they're bringing in for a hive. I mean, yeah, but. Yeah, because there's a lot of members. But it's not going to be definitely related. Yeah, so. I, I, but I'm really I'll excited see. about that costume, though. I'm merely excited to see Felicity smoke again, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm going to marry uh, her. Felicity marry smoke. <laughs> she's hot. She is. She's gorgeous. Yes. Uh, <laughs> where do you go from there? I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, drop Felicity Smoke. There's just nothing more to talk about. Yeah, it's a boring show at that, at best. Exactly. It's like 25 more minutes of just nothing more than than just a collage of, of, <laughs> of Felicity Smoke. <laughs> best show ever. But unfortunately, going into the movies, we have a, another set of, uh, of women who are, who are strapping up the proton packs. Uh, recently, oh, we got the first image of the new Ghostbusters reboot. Who are you going to call? Uh, featuring... right, nothing. You not somebody else, cricket, apparently, because we don't want to get booed off stage. Off. That's when the cricket should have went off right there. 
Thanks. Like that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I. Uh, all right. Well, the first Ghostbusters loved it. Second, not a fan. This reboot you know of what? all women cast is, I think it's they have some pretty funny uh, actresses in, in this in this in this reboot. So. Well, I mean, you know, like at first I was on the fence about it. I, plus, I was like, I was like, oh come on. I mean, uh, I mean, at least are they going to be a franchise of the original Ghostbusters? No, this is a complete reboot, complete blank slate. I was like, oh, damn it, why? But it, w- it wasn't until a while back until I actually put it together and said, you know what, think about it. Harold Ramis is dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ernie Hudson's pretty much half retired as it is. Bill Murray was never going to commit. And Dan Aykroyd, God bless him. Dude, I have a better body type than Dan Aykroyd. He would but... <laughs> But, I mean, I am actually kind of okay with it. Uh, I mean, they are keeping some things, you know, pretty pretty legit to the original story, I guess, in a way. Uh, the, the, the Ecto-1 looks awesome. It's a still a hearse, but it's like an updated hearse. It's like a 1980s hearse instead of a 1950s hearse. I mean, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, my, my only hope is, uh, is if they keep the humor at least accessible on like all fronts, it's kind of like the original Ghostbusters was. They had their highball humor, such as like the uh, the uh, ghost given Ray head. <laughs> I mean, it was alluded to. It was alluded, but they didn't have to get raunchy with it. I think the worst they said was was uh, uh, they called Walter Peck dickless. I think that was as hard as it got. The Annie Potts character is that going to be played by Channing Tatum or something like that, or some it's big it's actually going to be played by Chris Hemsworth. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, okay, gotcha. Which I that has me curious on exactly how that's going to happen. I mean, you've seen that guy. The guy's a freaking yeah. brick house. He's going to be a secretary. I got to see this. A brick uh, house. house, mighty, mighty. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm My, going it with, it with an open mind. And yeah. Going, I might not see it in the theaters, but I might red box it. <laughs> My only hope is is that <laughs> yes, the not brought by Paramount. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, like Melissa McCarthy, she she is known for her hard like like hard comedy, but I hope they kind of keep it to where it's still accessible. No, because in order for this movie to do, they need to make it raunchy. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy raunchy. is awesome. I, yeah, I think hilarious. she's the most underrated actress. I think she's better than uh, I can't remember that blonde now in that that movie. Now uh, she's a stand-up comedian. Amy Schumer. Amy, oh, I think she's yeah. funnier. she's funnier. She's way funnier than Amy Schumer. Yeah, I saw her in Spy. Comedy. That's a different comedy. Yeah, it is. Amy and Schumer's I, dirty. Yeah. Super well, I mean, dirty. she can be too. If you saw Spy <laughs> with Melissa McCarthy and you see her on I've Mike and Molly, like, she is an amazing actress and she's extremely Mike. underrated. See, oh, that's the thing is I hope they keep her humor at least enough to where, you know, because because they want to build this into a franchise. Right. And it's hard to build a franchise on a full R-rated, you know, you know. Right. Surf, I mean, uh, the original Ghostbusters, I think, was PG-13. Well, that's, yeah, that they they want to keep it low so that way they can maximize their, their money at the box <laughs> office. The higher rating you get, I mean. It's Bridesmaids with Ghostbusters. It's exactly that. Me- if Melissa McCarthy's in it, I yeah. just. You just said I'm gonna go. I watch everything with her in it because I yeah. she's I freaking she's hilarious. She's no, I agree. My favorite, one of my favorite actresses. Uh, but to get on the exact hard route, uh, we had the new leaked Deadpool trailer, which at the time of the showing it wasn't oh, released God. yet. Uh, what do you guys think? Before I chime in with my two cents, can't wait to watch it. That's what's it. <laughs> I think it looks better than the Suicide the Suicide Squad trailer. <laughs> I, 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 I definitely got to agree on. Uh, funny thing is, is this is the director's first movie. He was a video game developer. Joe, you might, as oh, a chieftain, you might actually enjoy that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think I that's mean, really exciting because those those two actually marriage together. Mm-hmm. So there's those actually there's, there's like a gray area there with that. But yeah. Well, I, I spoke to a couple uh, film guys that I know, and. Uh, uh, 
the only thing is, is they didn't really care for the cinematography of it, just because of the fact that he's a lot of amateur angles. But uh, why well, not pick I mean, up a deck director of photography for you to do that? <laughs> why do you have to do it yourself? What? <laughs> well, he's directing it, but I mean, you need a DP for that. So, yeah. director of photography. Um, well, uh, so. I mean, but my only thing is about it is it's going to be a gamble for Fox. It's going to be a really big gamble for Fox. It's something they haven't really done before, as far as a as uh, as far as pushing the envelope for for an X Men movie. It's far away from the franchise they're trying to build with with like the two properties they have. I mean, it, it, it's going to be rough as far as that horror R rating. I really hope a lot of people go watch it because that's the only way that box office is gonna is gonna make it. I think As, a lot of people are gonna watch. It. I think that a lot of the older crowd's gonna watch it. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be honest, just because it's a uh, superhero esque kind of uh, uh, mm. you know character, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm kind of pretty sure that a lot of the younger generation now don't even know who Deadpool is. <sighs> well, that's I mean, the Bay Nibble mythic. Yeah, that's uh, the Bay well, I mean, because they recently put him in, uh, I think, in season one of Ultimate Spider-Man. So th they've had a little taste of who Deadpool is, and he's pretty common, at least on a lot talking, of Marvel pages. I'm not talking about kids that you know that you know watch the cartoon. I'm talking about just you know the general kids, you know that just yeah. you know, oh, they hear superhero, they're just gonna go and watch it. I mean, they're not gonna gotcha. Know who, well, the same thing like, can be argued for Ant-Man. Exactly, I don't know who Ant-Man exactly. Ant is, but exactly. people are gonna go watch it because it's Marvel. Right. And not only that, because it's Marvel Studios. My friend worked on it. I'm not going to go watch it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> see Marvel, DC. You know, they hear it's superhero. It, it, they're going to watch the movie, regardless if it's rated yeah. R, PG-13. Right now, I, I, I'm just not I'm looking. Really, that's why my opinion. I don't think they're going to lose that much money when they make it a rated R, because people are going to buy the tickets for the, the under 17 year olds. I hope not, because if it tanks, it's going to suck because of the fact that that it's, it's going to want to be on Ryan Reynolds, which it's not all his fault. <laughs> I mean, he just acts in it. I mean, the guys have been pushing it, or pushing for it since freaking uh, uh, Wolverine, Wolverine Origins. So. Where they ruined him. Uh, thank Gavin Hood for that. <laughs> thank Gavin Hood for that. What do you think? Funny thing is the so-called fake pool that was there. Uh uh, that wasn't even Ryan Reynolds. That was his stunt double. He was all. Uh, Ryan Reynolds was actually filming the proposal at that time. Like he had to leave early to go film I didn't that know movie. That. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's gonna have some quips, but I'm gonna wait and kind of see it. I think they're kind of missing a a huge target that Fox could have needed to try to you know uh, maybe because the way I see it, if 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 Fox can make as much money as a Marvel Studios movie. I, because I want those two to butt heads. I mean, we we don't need the X Men and everything in the Marvel in the Marvel Cinematic Universe yet. We have so much going on in that. Keep keep the X Men away. There's a whole different deck of cards. I mean, let let them build let them build that. I mean, I mean, because we still have Fantastic Four to worry exactly. about. Exactly. We have Fantastic Four coming in too. I knew you were going to go month? eventually get to that. Is it next month? Yes, uh, next in month August. in August. Yeah. I'm, not, excited about I'm that. still not going to see it unless I see something better for Doom. I'm a huge Doom fan, so I mean, you know darn well you're going to watch it either way. You're going to go. Yeah, you're don't going to go, dude. Don't, don't bullshit no one, man. Yeah, we all you're, know where you're going, and, and then you're going to write an article on on Facebook yes. about it and how great it was. We know you have it. Or even yeah. if you say it's bad, you're going to watch it. You're going to yeah. watch it. I mean, I've watched some pretty bad movies. Green Lantern. Uh, um, oh. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think that was that bad. It wasn't good. <laughs> I, mean, I was entertained. Uh, I, I, I liked it for what it was. They gave us Killawall. Killawall looked awesome. Right. Rest in peace, Michael Clark Duncan. Because he was the best voice. That dude, the, he was Killawall. That was awesome. I mean, but but other than that, it was it was it was such a Ryan Reynolds movie. Like 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 you can either take that take his scenes from Van Wilder in Waiting and transplant that into into Green Lantern. That's not exactly really how how Jordan is. I mean, yeah, he's quirky, but he's not like you know you know like a you know Deadpool because like, it, it really was he was just being Deadpool as Green Lantern. It was very sarcastic. Exactly. Too, exactly. too soon for a Green Lantern reboot with Channing Tatum. They are doing a reboot. Yeah, uh, Green Lantern Corpse. Yep, and they have rumored on who's actually going to be Hal Jordan. 
I don't know if y'all heard about this. They rumored Chris Pine. Chris Pine is rumored to be the new Hal Jordan. Well, uh, I think Chieftain was was really gunning for that position. I, I was rumored for for that. I actually read for the part, but unfortunately, I didn't get it. So. <laughs> <give> it oh. <laughs> Damn Hollywood politics. <laughs> no more sound effects. Sound effects okay. Hate those guys. Sound effects are fine. Okay. <laughs> Uh, speaking about DC, let's move on to that Suicide Squad trailer that, that uh... Let's not. Uh, moving on. I'm just kidding. All right, next topic. <laughs> <laughs> By our reactions, um, you know how we feel. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. And regardless, I mean, the Batman's going to make an appearance in it, so that's going to be cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, the trailer, though. Hmm. Me and Havoc talked about this the other day. What did you guys say? It was, uh, it, it was the marketing aspect of the whole trailer. Yeah. It looked like an independent film. That's what you're no, hinting around. No, no, no. It was. It's that they, they uh, people are not gonna know who all the other suicide, people in the suicide are. They're not. They're gonna know Will Smith, who's Deadshot, uh, Harley Quinn, Maggie Margot, and Jared Leto is the Joker. They're only gonna know those three. Mm-hmm. He's saying that they should have introduced the characters a little bit better in the in the trailer. Exactly. Yes. Uh, I mean, they just kind of threw those characters out there. I'm like, oh yay! There's there's this the, the, there's this blonde chick doing circus LA in her cell. You got Will Smith because that's how everyone's going to see it is Will Smith. They don't. They won't really. The average moviegoer is the target audience you want to try to reach because they're the ones who are going to you know kind of the comic book fans you're going to grab regardless. That's like an instant. Uh, an instant ticket buy, but as but far as like, well, they're, they're going to grab that audience, so that's well, that's exactly. I mean, but it's the uh, but uh, the general audience. I tried to look at it from, from a general audience per, uh, perspective, and all I saw was a Will Smith movie. I was like, all right, Will Smith, all right, yeah, I love Fresh Prince. So, <laughs> and, and I saw Jared Leto's face once. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm not a fan of I, I'm not I'm a fan of his Joker. Of, I'm going to be a fan of his Joker. <sighs> I mean, so awful. I'm gonna be a fan of his Joker. Like, I just don't see Joker sitting in a chair long enough to get a tattoo. Right. And I. Mean, but Harley looks awesome, though. Harley looks awesome. Keith Ledger like raised the bar with Joker, though, so it's kind of hard to get I'm, out of I'm that not frame of mind. Him. It's I, that's because it's you can't compare those two. I can't do it. You can't because it's not fair. No. That's uh, okay. Here comes Havoc. He has a big opinion about that, too. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Uh, uh, I'm listening. Oh. Uh, uh, it's coming. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, you know, we were talking about this on... Uh, you know, hey, we were talking about this on Destiny last night. Uh, and pretty much, I mean, the thing about Jared Leto's Joker, he's 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 coming off of off the hills of Heath Ledger's Joker, which personally I didn't really find as the best Joker, in my opinion. I did it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, I, I did wow. the same phase. I told you, and here's this reason. Go ahead. I mean, I mean that, that wasn't Joker. It was a nice play on Joker, but the but all the Nolan villains were really lame. All of them, from Bane to Ra's al Ghul. Uh, even the Joker. That wasn't really the Joker. That was that was really just Heath Ledger, you know, playing a psychopath, which which he played that role perfectly well. That wasn't Joker. That wasn't like killing joke Joker. That wasn't like you know, that wasn't the the, the classic Joker. Unfortunately, we they they've they've added those elements into the comics recently where he's more of a deranged psychopath. But I mean, but we're talking about the guy who's who who loves to torment and thinks it's funny. <laughs> Batman. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, if you watched Batman the animated series, I think you can draw a parallel between him and Heath Ledger's Joker, and it's actually. Not really close, but the same character is there, and you can't sep you can separate the two, but you can actually understand the way Mark Hamill does it and the way Heath Ledger does it. And it's I don't well, think it's the same, but you get the essence of what jo who Joker is, and I respectfully disagree with you about Heath Ledger um, not being the true Joker. I just have a difference of opinion, and I just I think he did a, a good job. Me and Havoc actually did agree on one thing, though. We decided we did agree on who the best Joker was, and we, from a comic book aspect, is where we're going with on this one. Okay. 
and that was Jack Nicholson. Yeah, he was excellent. He, excellent. Yeah. He dropped the hardest line you could ever see. The, the hardest, hardest line you could ever the, the hardest line you could ever drop in a comic book movie. There's no other line ever in existence. And that's have you ever played with the devil in the pale moonlight? If you ever uh, danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yes, I, lo- I, I love gonna, it. I, I thought you were going to go a little bit alternative with that line from Batman and when he's dancing with Vicky Vale. It's just like it's like Beauty and the Beast, but if someone else calls you a beast, I'll slip, I'll, I'll slip their, I'll slip their throat or gouge their eyes out or something to that effect. That was a pretty dark one-liner too. That was a dark totally, line too. I totally butchered the line, but I don't, That's I don't true. watch them on a weekly basis like you. So yeah. <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, no, but really about the Jared Leto, the Jared Leto Joker, I'm not that impressed. I'm gonna, have, I need to, I need to see more. But everyone's getting really excited about him, but there's a good chance he's actually going to want to be in the villain of the Suicide Squad movie. I see him because because in all the scenes from the trailer, that uh, they didn't really show anything other than Joker until the very end. Right. And I think that's probably what they wanted. It's the whole intention, yeah. I think, yeah, they wanted, everyone, everyone. They wanted everyone on the edges of their seats, like, oh my god, I want to see more. I have to see this guy. I have to see this new Joker. So now I get their aspect on how they did it with him. I wish they would have marketed the other characters a little more. Um, no, I'm not. So, I'm, I'm not including uh, Deadshot or you know Harley Quinn in that. Yeah, because uh, people like Boomerang. People know who Boomerang is. <laughs> to appeal to more general audience, opposed to the hardcore comic book fans, is what exactly. you're saying. Because yeah. those are the people are are gonna know who who those other characters are. Yeah, and you want to you want to appeal it. You want to have an appeal for the hardcore fan as well as the general public because you know what? There's more of the general public than there are fans of it. It's just no, I agree. That's just how that's how it's going to be. No, no. Yeah, yeah. In you know, like DC's always been notorious for that is marketing to their collectors and to their their comic book base. But but like on the on the on the flip side, that's where Disney and Marvel have always been been more successful at it. They market to everyone. Because I mean, that's why you have flooded toy aisles full of just Marvel crap that's everywhere. That's just peg warming, and you have shirts, you have clothes. I mean, so I mean, it's just it's everywhere. I mean, shit. I'm pretty sure there's Avengers toilet paper somewhere. But going to the big boy, the big boy. Aside from aside from su- some Suicide Squad, uh, Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice, the the Comic Con trailer. What did you guys think? I'm excited for the movie. <laughs> Did not care for the trailer. If that really? makes sense for you guys. I liked it, but I mean I'm more excited I just want I'm more excited for the movie. It didn't spark me as as much as it probably should have. Um, I gotta say it for me it really kind of, uh, I mean cause I've been sold for the movie since day one since they announced Ben Affleck as Batman. Uh but wasn't excited about that. By Daredevil, the way. I mean Batman. I don't. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Ben Affleck in anything he's ever done. Wow. I'll be honest. Not, not even, even in the J Lo video. Not even. Jenny from the block. Some of all fears was all right. <laughs> wow, that movie was boring. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sum of all. You didn't have people flying in it, havoc. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Needed more explosions. <laughs> a nuke. You should have right. picked Michael Bay for that one. Hey, more Michael Bay. That's all that mattered. Michael Bay ruined your childhood with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Transformers. <laughs> and Rainbow Bright. Uh, are, you <laughs> are, you, are you excited about the? Oh no, we're just sorry. Uh, but you said. What did you think about the trailer? I don't really put all my chips in the trailer. Um, it's either they put all the best things in the trailer or they don't put enough. Uh, I think it was fine. Uh, it gives a little bit of a hint of the story, what's going on. Uh, it gives you it gives you a nice introduction. That's what the trailers are for. Um, give you a brief synopsis of the story, which it does. It's fine. Uh, it was a trailer. It, it nothing really blows me away anymore. I guess I'm getting a little used to all this 
excitement going on for it. But I mean, it was a trailer, man. I'm like, I'm great, great. It gives me, it gives me a little background of the story, you know, without revealing too much of what's going on. Uh, it kind of tackles some modern day issues that are going on with hero worship, whatever. It's if it's in the geopolitical field, in in putting it into a layman's form, such as a movie, and it kind of ties some intellectual stuff as well as some fun stuff together. I know that's a really boring statement. But I think that's what it really does, and I was no, actually, I was more or less entertained. Well, by to it. go along with your statement, what else could they possibly do with trailers now these days that is different right. than everyone else? You can't. I mean, so, uh, no, I, I, I get where you're coming from on that one for sure. I mean, yeah, like going with the marketing. Sometimes it goes marketing overboard. I mean, how many clips are are released for movies already? Um, how many trailers? There's like three, like three trailers for for one movie. And it usually shows almost the entire movie, and then right. it kind of surprises. Uh, Stop pushing fucking Ant Man down my throat! Stop! It's a bad story. Stop freaking putting it on TV every five fucking minutes. I'm not watching Ant Man. It's, it's the worst right, character no. next to friggin' Paul Green Rundo. Arrow. Awful. Paul Rundo. Paul Rundo. Paul Rundo. And that was Chieftain projecting 404 spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but no. Sorry. I mean, that the best thing Sorry. is, I, I mean, Zack Snyder, he's really good at, at projecting those type of stories. Right. And right. so it's going to be interesting kind of seeing what he does without Nolan looking over his shoulder. That's why I did like Batman, uh, Man of Steel, is that uh, you can't make a movie depressing about a guy who wears red booties. But that he had nothing to be depressed That's about in that movie. Point. I mean, but this one looks like he's inject they're injecting some personality into him, which God Clark needed. I mean, and so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. I mean, I, I mean, but Jesse Eisenberg, I was I was hesitant about his Lex, but I'm I'm kind of I'm kind I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm okay with it. I'm more in the fact that I I just like Jesse Eisenberg in general. Like, this is this is the first time I can just be a villain, and not a douchebag. And I'm not I'm talking about him playing Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> he he's coming out with a new movie I want to see called American Ultra. I mean, but <laughs> the only thing I didn't like about the trailer was the was the desert scene. I'm like, why is Batman going to the why is Batman going to the desert? You don't know like You don't know his life. I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> That's why I have a sore throat all the time because my throat's always dry because I'm in the desert. His his bat goggles, his I bat goggles. Batman, have it? Do you bleed? <laughs> you will. Oh God, I'm so glad we can finally probably get away from that stupid ass line. <laughs> but now we have Shia LaBeouf to worry about. Just do it. Just do it. Oh God. I need a rat tail, or you know, come around the sides. Oh, he <laughs> did have a rat tail. Oh, oh he gross. still does. Nothing says classy than a rat tail. Yeah. But, uh, yes, yeah, this is like comparing apples to oranges. Uh, but do you think this movie could possibly finally give Marvel Studios a run for their money, finally give them the competition they need? They I needed this competition. give them the competition. I'm not giving anyone the edge here at Marvel. But, <laughs> but this is the competition Marvel did because they were being a little more laxative. You know, they're being very lax with all their stuff they're doing. They could. Yeah. They need to push. They could push harder, and I think this will and, help. Yeah, like in, in every, like every company, every corporation needs that competition. They they have it. They they need it. Like uh, like Nintendo and Sega, they they push each other to the max. Sony and Microsoft. I mean, the, the, I mean, I mean, you you need it. Cause if not, you get stale. You get stale yeah, and you get complacent. <laughs> You know what? You, you know what, Chief did. We're gonna compare the box office mojo scores uh, and, and see how to, and see how it goes. Lagging out in Legion. I mean, I mean. It's just, Ooh. Did I? Ooh. Did I go oh, there? oh, oh no. We forgot to inform you that Mythic has been let go. Dude. We wish him the best on his future endeavors. <laughs> Who are they? Who are they? What? I, I don't know. A figment of my imagination, I guess. It's just. It's just an illusion. An nightmare. <laughs> it all goes down to if you got beef with the chief, you're not going to be able to keep up with us. It's the way it is. Got beef with the chief. It's hardcore. Hardcore. 
<laughs> We're still around. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's to our own horn. Lagging out in, in this, the, these guys. And revolver, man. The the day. That's the all you need. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, show off that hat. Show off that brand new spanking hat. Yeah. That's an awesome hat, dude. Respect you should be man. selling those. Oh, uh, we are. We are going to start uh, selling those probably within the next couple months. We're going to start putting those in retail. So those are pretty friggin' awesome hats. How much are they? Uh, they're thirty. Thirty? That's not bad because they're, they're embroidered, they're, aren't they? No, they're yeah, they're huh? They're embroidered. It looks like it's embroidered. It is. It's all. Oh, yeah, that, that's that's it's completely worth it. Was it flex fit? Yes. So it's you know oh, it's man, a high quality hat, dude. I'm high getting quality it. hat. Yep, yep. I'm getting one. I'm getting one too. I gotta support the revolver games. <laughs> Speaking you know, for I'm... those who, for those who are who who are tuning into Nerd Run for the first time, why don't you tell them a little bit about about yourself and Revolver Gaming? All right. Well, uh, again, name is Mythic, uh, VP of Revolver Gaming Network. We're a competitive gaming network on all platforms, ranging from PC, Xbox, and uh, PlayStation, or even moving into to Nintendo itself, um, wow. but uh, please check out uh, the Revolver Gaming Network takeover of the Lagging Out Network uh, in the, here in the next two weeks. Wait a second, that's news to me. <laughs> you guys are taking over the podcast for the next two weeks. Taking over. Oh, it's a, it's a Revolver Gaming takeover. Look out! You're gonna see some. What are they gonna watch? What are they gonna see? Mythic. They're going to see some awesome montages that our, our, our multimedia team developed from uh, Call of Duty, which is one of our main our main uh, games that we play competitively, and also Destiny. So you're going to oh, have cool, some awesome, uh, awesome montages. Big thumbs up to our multimedia team that works really hard and uh, to make some great content. Very nice, very nice. I can't wait to see some of that, especially... Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, especially since we're taking since they're taking over uh, the ner- the lagging out podcast for a while. That's gonna be interesting. Be interesting not seeing Zombie Killer and Chieftain on every Wednesday. <laughs> well, it's just I think it's just gonna be for two weeks, and then we we're gonna come back. So, okay, so. yeah, so It'll be definitely interesting. But um, we need a break, gentlemen. Uh, and one last thing, actually, but it's, it's not on the notes or anything. But uh, I, I want to personally thank thank Chieftain. I want to personally thank Mythic. Uh, I want to thank Zombie Killer for all for you guys sticking with me and pushing me from like a low level 16 on Destiny to level 29 and still working <laughs> with me. So Which problem, man? <laughs> I Just mean, my but, dad's thumb and everything. Man. Man. <laughs> oh yeah, gamer's thumb, gamer's thumb. Show him that gamer's like, thumb. That, that's that's, 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 that's from. Uh, from uh, you can see this one is a little bit more visible, and that's from, uh, from uh, Iron, Iron Banner. 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 Iron Banana. Yeah. I hit I hit <laughs> I hit five on all of my characters until two in the morning on uh, Monday night getting that done. But then my my finger got completely swollen, and I couldn't bend it. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. it. <laughs> well, on behalf of Mythic uh, Chieftain and myself. We want to say thank y'all for tuning in, and we'll see you guys on the next Nerd Realm.